Here we're going to run an index and match so that we can type in item ID or price or in stock and then whatever item name we'd like and return the price or the in stock quantity. So we'll start out by using the item and the price given. First I'm going to write a match function which will be nested inside the index function. So the match function we're going to look for the word that's in A2 at this time is price and we look in the header row of the table and we want an exact match. That match is going to return a 3 and that's just column 1, 2, 3. That's the reason for the 3 there. So now I'm going to cut that match and use the index function. And the index function is going to search in this entire array. I missed. There we go. So the index is going to search the entire array and what row is going to come from uh, what is in B1. At this point I'm going to write, um, we know that bronzing blush is in the third row here so I'm just going to put a 3 just to test and make sure that I've got this working right with the match nested inside. So the column number is also column 3 and we know the column number because we did the match for the price and we get a value of $14 which is what we're looking for here. So now I need to replace that 3 with a match that will find bronzing blush in this array. So that match is going to be um, so the lookup value for that match is going to be the value in B1 um, and you're going to look in this array. The match arrays can only be um, either one row or one column. So now we still have the 14 but we can change this for example to in stock and instead of get the 14 we get the value of 1 and we could change this to derma tint since that one's up high it's easy to see the 2 we could change this back to price and get the 15. So that's how the index and match works. So typically when I've got a nest functions, I always start with one of the inner functions, make sure I've got that working right, then I build another piece of the function and go step by step. Um, and then also, if somebody were to type something like in stock incorrectly, we get this ugly error, but we can nest this whole thing inside an if error function. So I'm going to do a control X to cut if error and then paste the function back in and then the value here is um, not found in list or whatever kind of error message you want it to return and so now it shows that in stock is not found and if we fix that um, we don't get the error but if anybody types anything that's not found in the list um, we'll get that not found in the list error instead of that pound in a so the error is a little more helpful to the user.